So when couples are arguing, it's really important for them to step back and see the other's point of view. Talk us through that, Annie. Well, um, metaphorically and practically step back, yes. Actually separate themselves for a little bit, go to their safe space, and then come back when things are a little calmer. Um, we talk in Imago, I use a process called Imago, which is a way of approaching couples and relationships. And in Imago, we talk about the bridge. And the bridge is a metaphorical space between the couples, a bridge wide enough so that they can pass into each other's world. And we ask the one to be the host for the other one to come into their world and uh, be kind to them in that space. So um, in arguments, um, it's really important that they're able to see cross the bridge and see the other person's point of view. It's a really hard thing to do when the things are heated, but it's a really important thing to do as well. Yes, I think it's really one of the things that is challenging is not to interrupt. Incredibly difficult to do. Not interrupting is an incredibly difficult thing to do because we have things we want to say. It's really important that we have the last word, that we are heard. So in the Imago process, we ask that uh, they take turns to listen to each other. And in taking turns, they wait until the other one has completely finished all that they need to say before they start their own part of the argument. And as part of that, we ask them to mirror each other. So one will start talking and this, the other one will listen and mirror back what they're hearing. The first one talks some more, the second one uh, listens and mirrors. And that process goes on and on until the first one has completely finished saying all that they need to say. And then they swap and the other one has a turn at saying all they want to say. So when you say mirroring, do you mean repeating back? So it might be, what I've heard you say, Annie, is... Yes, absolutely. What I've heard you say, or just a lot, a few th words of what they've said. Ideally, they'd repeat back the whole sentence or the whole bit that they've heard. But um, it, it, if they can just repeat f a few words of what they heard, that's helpful. But so, when, when when the speaker hears their words come back to them, they know they've been heard, and maybe they've been heard inaccurately. So they have an opportunity to put it right. So it's like when I leave the so when you leave the dishes unwashed in the sink, it really infuriates me. Yes. Well, if you were to say that to me, I would reverse the pronoun. So I'd say, so what I'm hearing you say is that when I leave the dishes in the sink, it really infuriates you. Yes, exactly. Um, and then I say, and is there more? And you would perhaps reply. Yes, there is more. When you leave your clothes all over the place and I have to clean up after you, it really infuriates me. So when I leave my clothes all over the place, it really infuriates you and you have to clear up after me. Is there more? Okay. So you just keep that going until there's no more to say. You keep that going until there's no more to say and then you switch. So I become the one to say um, it really infuriates me when you leave um, your empty coffee cups by the sink and don't put them in the dishwasher. And you would mirror that back. 